perennial, I'm reading it. So, I'm reading from page 26. Mind affects its body in four ways, subconsciously, through that unbelievably subtle physiological intelligence of which Dietsch hypothesized under the name of the Entelechy, consciously by deliberate acts of will, unconsciously again by the reaction upon the physical organism or emotional states, and then having nothing to do with the organs or processes reacted upon either consciously or subconsciously in certain supernormal manifestations outside the body that the body matter outside the body matter can be influenced by the mind in two ways first by means of the body and second by a supernormal process recently studied under laboratory conditions described as the PK effect um, Similarly, the mind can establish relations with other minds, uh, either indirectly by willing its body to undertake symbolic activities, mm -hmm. such as speech or writing, or supernormally by direct approach of mind reading, telepathy, supersensory perception. Mm -hmm. All right. Let us now consider these relationships a little more closely. In some fields, the philological intelligence works on its own initiative as when it directs the never-ceasing processes of breathing, say, or simulation. In others, it acts as the behest of the conscious mind as when we will to accomplish some action but do not and cannot will the muscular, granular, nerves vascular means to the desired end the apparently simple act of mimicry will well illustrate the extraordinary nature of the feats performed by the physiological intelligence when a parrot making use let us remember of the beak tongue and throat of a bird when a parrot imitates the sounds produced by the lips teeth plow at the vocal cords of a man Articulating words, what precisely happens? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Responding in some as yet entirely uncomprehended ways to the conscious mind's desire to imitate some remembered or immediately perceived event. Uh, the physiological intelligence sets in motion large numbers of muscles coordinating the effects upon such exquisite skill that the result is a more or less perfect copy of the original. Again, it's on the level of the conscious mind, not merely of the parrot, but of the most highly gifted of human beings, uh, would find itself completely baffled by a problem of comparable complexity. As an example of the third way in which our minds affect matter, we might cite the all-familiar phenomenon of indigestion. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. The mind affects indigestion. In certain persons, symptoms of dyspepsia make their appearance when the conscious mind is troubled mm -hmm. by such negative emotions as fear, envy, anger, or hatred. These emotions are directed towards events or persons in the outer environment, but in some way are other they adversely affect the physiological intelligence and this derangement results among other things in the nervous digest indigestion mm. Mm. it's very advanced uh, for 1945 mm. Mm. from uh, tuberculosis and gastric ulcer to heart disease and even dental Dental carries numerous physical ailments have been found to be closely related to certain undesirable states of the conscious mind. It's a mind body uh, correspondence he's describing. 
proper health. Conversely, every physician knows that a calm and cheerful patient is much more likely to recover than one who is agitated and depressed. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it seems uh, this has been around uh, sort of like uh, like uh, the other book, William James, uh, Variety's Religious Experience. Most of the stuff was around. Uh, finally, we come to such occurrences as faith healing and levitation occurrences, supernormal and strange, but never the last attested by masses of evidence, which it is hard to discount completely. Precisely how faith cures diseases, whether at Lourdes or in the hypnotist consulting room, or how St. Joseph Cupertino was able to ignore the laws of gravitation, we do not know. Let us remember that we are no less ignorant of the way in which minds and the bodies are related in the most extraordinary everyday activities in the same way. We are able to form any idea of the modus operati randi of what Professor Ryan has called the PK effect. Nevertheless, the fact that the fall of dice can be influenced by the mental states of certain individuals seems now to have been established beyond the possibility of doubt. And if the PK effect can be demonstrated in the laboratory and measured by statistical methods, then obviously the intrinsic credibility of the scattered anecdotal evidence for the direct influence of mind upon matter, not merely within the body, but outside in the external world, is therefore notably increased. The same is true of extrasensory perception. Hmm. Parent examples of it are constantly turning up in ordinary life, but science is almost impotent to cope with a particular case, the isolated instance, promoting their mythological indaptitude to the rank of a criterion of truth. Dogmatic scientists have often branded everything beyond the pale of their limited Competence as unreal or even impossible, but, but when the tests are for ESP can be repeated under standardized conditions, the subject comes under the jurisdiction of the law of probabilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's talking about mind over matter and influencing matter, and achieves in the teeth of what passionate opposition, a measure of scientific respectability. Hmm. Such very boldly and briefly are the most important things we know about mind in regard to its capability to influence matter. From this modest knowledge about ourselves, what are we entitled to conclude in regard to the divine object of our nearly total ignorance. Hmm. First, as to creation, if a human mind can directly influence matter, not merely within, but even outside its body, then a divine mind eminent in the universe or transcendent to it may be presumed to be capable of imposing forms upon a pre-existing chaos of formless matter or even perhaps of thinking substance as well as forms into existence. Once created and divinely informed, the universe has to be sustained. The necessity for a continuous recreation of the world becomes manifest according to Descartes. Quote, when we consider the nature of time or the burden duration of things for this is of 
of such a kind that its parts are not mutually dependent and never coexist accordingly from the fact that we are now it does not necessarily follow that we shall be a moment afterwards unless some cause vis a vis that which first produced us shall as it were continually reproduce us that is conserve us it says god as to conserve you after he's created you he's gonna have to do maintenance it won't work. Here we seem to have something analogous on the cosmic level to the physiological intelligence, which is in man, the lower animals, unsleepingly performs the task of seeing their bodies behave as they should. Indeed, the physiological intelligence may possibly be regarded as a special aspect of general recreating logos. In Chinese phraseology, it is the Tao. Tao. As it manifests itself on the level of living bodies. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. He talks about, um, from page 26 to 28, pretty much mind affects its body. And, uh, and it's created and maintained by the logos. Tau. Oh. Read 20, page 26 to 28 of Perennial Philosophy, Elder Suxley. Uh, the concept of mind influencing body and health and getting well and wellness and all that stuff, 1945, or actually earlier.